We recall the Russo-Japanese War, which ended in 1906 with the Treaty of Portsmouth, New Hampshire. This treaty ceded to Japan the Kwantung Lease Territory and also the control of the South Manchuria Railway. With the signing of this treaty began modern industry and education in an ancient land. Since then, a barren and desolate land has been transformed into a great commercial center. We hope to make clear in your mind the real reason for the present strife in the Far East. Let us look first at Kirin. Kirin is the oldest town in Manchuria. Now it teems with industry and agriculture. The extreme heat and cold of the climate is excellent for the farm product, and so an agriculture experimental station is maintained by the government. Modern harvest machinery is used throughout Manchuria. Sheep raising has been greatly advanced, the native breeds having been crossed with the Merino sheep and the output of wool doubled. Through the experimental station, the soya bean industry was introduced into Manchuria. And now it is one of the leading products. The soya bean and the bean cake products alone make Manchuria rich and profitable. You saw the busy smokestacks in an earlier scene. Now each one is attached to a factory that is making soya bean products. The matter of supply and demand is readily met through these soya bean cakes. The bean mash is pressed into a wheel-like piece and they are carted and rolled into the storehouses. Thousands upon thousands of pounds of these cakes supply the factories that prepare an endless variety of food products for hungry Chinese and Japanese mouths. These are the numerous storehouses. All this industry necessitates easy accessibility to the surrounding countries. Here is the harbor of Daren. Daren means in Japanese, great connections. Here there is ceaseless activity. Materials, commodities, and people all are in constant motion. Daren is at the southernmost extremity of the Kwantung Peninsula, a very important port and typical of Manchuria. Study the trend of fashions and of character. And here is the heart of the city that now has a broken heart central circle which forms the middle of the spider web plan of the city. Modern? Why well, look at these buildings. This is the stock exchange, the Wall Street of Dehran. There seems to be quite a bit of activity on the curb. Uh oh Across the Nippon Bridge is the town of Harbin. Harbin was built by the Russians and is in a very strategic position. It is the railroad and shipping center and so important that it was the very first objective of the Japanese. You will notice that it is a very well-built city with architecture in keeping with the best European style. Now from this Songari River waterfront, one may make connections for almost anywhere to Mukden, Siberia, Peking, to Korea or Japan. Here is Port Arthur, the storm center of the Russo-Japanese War. Now the educational center of Manchuria, this is one of the schools, a technical school, that trains the young men of Manchuria in the up-to-the-minute methods of this machine age. There are still signs of the old life. Here's an old barter market where the farmers exchange commodities. And this is Yingkao on the river. Uh, together with the railroad, this is a main uh, avenue of trade and communication in and with Manchuria. You know, the language of the natives is often very descriptive. Chen Chung, Chen Chung. Doesn't it sound like the business end of a freight train? <laughs> well, Chen Chun is the northern terminal of the South Manchuria Railroad and has a population of over 150,000. From here, through freight and passenger trains, connect all Europe with the Far East. Most of the trains of the Chinese Eastern Railroad are armored against inland tribes of bandits. These and other rolling stocks are cared for in a very efficient repair shop. These scenes readily show us how far Manchuria has advanced in the years since the Portsmouth Treaty. For in addition to remarkably cheap labor, 
They use all modern repair methods and equipment. Here at last, in the jaws of this huge traveling crane, this truck, the noisy part of those sleepless sleepers, is at last silenced. Mukden is a very large city and divided into the old and the new towns. The new park, built by the Japanese, contains every facility of modern life. The Mukden railroad stations are scenes of endless activity. Here we catch trains for either the north or the south. Now here is more of the natural wealth of Manchuria. We are now at the famous coal mines of Fushun, regarded throughout the world as one of the most remarkable of surface mines. No digging of great tunnels here and no necessity for the men to spend days underground, for the coal seams are on the surface and are broken by dynamiting. The seams of coal vary in thickness from 78 to 426 feet. In other words, these are actually coal mountains and extend for 10 miles and contain 1 billion 200 million tons of coal. It's really mining in the open air, or what they know as the open cut. The Togo pit, as it is known locally, is operated with the most up-to-date equipment known to science. These all steel elevators are anchored in solid cement. Elevated walks keep the passing workers out of danger's way. And here we are in Anchan, and at the seat of another basic and all-important industry, the home of pig iron. Here again, the mining of the ore is a simple matter, for these are iron mountains containing 200 million tons of good quality ore. These expert workers handle iron when it is so hot that it runs like water. It is allowed to flow into the sand molds and is next seen as pig iron. All these gigantic operations were made possible by the development of the South Manchuria Railroad and are now within its control. Think of it, the annual capacity of these furnaces is 150,000 tons of pig iron. This section of Manchuria is so rich in lumber that it is called Wu Chi, meaning forest. The waterways are used for the transportation of logs from the forests to the mills. Note these sturdy Siberian ponies, Lilliputian in size, but Herculean in strength. They draw the logs from the river. <laughs> That's where pull really counts. Again, we see how modern are the methods used in preparing the lumber that really should be used in building more homes for an ever-increasing population. Here's the Yellow River Bridge that recently echoed to the shriek of shells and the boom of heavy guns. Note the fine steelwork of this modern drawbridge. There is a striking contrast between the ancient flat-bottomed sampans and this marvel of modern engineering. Now as we look upon the river life, uh, we ponder over Manchuria's wealth in the four basic natural assets, agriculture, lumber, coal, and iron, so essential to the welfare of any nation. And we realize the true reasons for this conflict. 